Hello everyone, my name is Sam Jenkins and I am the editor of all of the trailers that you see on the Standing for Truth YouTube channel. I'm also part of the creation research team based in the UK. Uh, we produce weekly live streams called Creation Conversations. It would be great to see you there. We encourage everyone to muck in, in the chat and have a, have a good time. The creative process behind trailers can sometimes be difficult. Sometimes you get stuck on an idea, sometimes you get stuck thinking of what's the best soundtrack to use. But always, you find a way of making it work. Something clicks, something just works. You find a piece of music, you find that perfect clip, and you're just like, right, yes, I can use that. And that's my experience with making trailers, is I'm good at making things click. I'm good at making things work. And I found my style in epic film trailers. The kind that you would see before a blockbuster film, ones to rile you up, get you excited about what you're about to see, and intrigue you about what's coming soon. Stories deserve to be told, and each trailer is a story, and that's part of my work that I do. I tell stories. Each trailer has a beginning, middle and end, a clear progression from one place to another, a problem and then a resolution. The entire process here is to help you get excited get you encouraged, get you on fire for your faith. It's not just Hollywood that can have really good products, we can too. And that's part of what I do as well at Creation Research, is working on the upcoming Genesis film project. I'm available to edit your trailers to get your story told. If you're interested, please feel free to uh, send an email to the email address that's on screen, but also it should be in the description box below. Send an email, get in contact, and we'll see what we can do. And now, I welcome you to the compilation of all of the trailers that I have done for Standing for Truth. Enjoy. of the American people believe literally in Adam and Eve, believe literally that the world is only 6,000 years old. I mean, that's a shocking figure, and you can't duck out of it. How many of you believe in God? <laughs> okay, a forest of hands. <laughs> so Richard Dawkins, these people are deluded. All, every single one of them. Well, I fear that's right, yes. Um, I would say it's rather like the phenomenon of the imaginary friend that children have and that comfort them and console them, but there's actually not the slightest shred of evidence that any kind of supernatural being exists. So I'm sorry to say, deluded, yes. Teach the controversy rather than try and censor out the information that shows yes. that evolution you know, is, is questionable. Seriously, there isn't a controversy. There may be a controversy uh, within evolution about certain details, but the, the fact of evolution is is uncontroversial. I mean, whether you like it or not, we're cousins of chimpanzees, we're slightly more distant cousins of monkeys. Let me just quote you, if I, if, I, if I may. The most unpleasant character in all fiction, misogynistic, homophobic, racist, genocidal, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, and you go on. It's, it's quite a list. That you... I should have thought that was beyond dispute, but I, I would come on to the, to the New Testament. What about the God of the New Testament? Um, here we have a God who wanted to forgive mankind its sins, including, by the way, the sin of Adam, who he presumably knew perfectly well never existed. Nevertheless, he wanted to forgive mankind's sins. Why didn't he just forgive them? Why was it necessary to have a human sacrifice, to have his son tortured and executed in order that the sins of mankind should be absolved? Is that not the most disgusting idea you ever heard? Why didn't he just forgive the sins? Why did he have to 
sacrifice a scapegoat. I would like to ask you, Professor, what do you have to say to someone, to someone who has met the risen and living Lord Jesus Christ, who has walked with God for over 50 years? <coughs> if you had been born in India, I dare say you would be saying the same thing about Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva. If you had been born in Afghanistan, I dare say you would be saying the same thing about Allah. The human mind is extremely susceptible to hallucination. If you substitute religious philosophy for science, there will be a generation of people who will not understand what science is. And they will be intellectually crippled from contributing to what the centuries have demonstrated to be the most efficient engine of economic growth that has ever been devised. And that is innovations in science and technology. Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of a, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year. Well, let me say that the evidence for the age of the Earth is every bit as compelling the Earth is four and a half billion years old, not six or ten thousand years old. Evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, in all of biology. It's like, it's very much analogous to trying to do geology without believing in tectonic plates. You're just not going to get the right answer. Your whole world is just going to be a mystery instead of an exciting place. Not one Christian ever has produced evidence. He didn't either, nor can you. No one can. It doesn't exist. That's not the I debate demand tonight. that any, anybody in this room who calls yourself a Christian, if you think you have scientific evidence to indicate you're God, bring it. You ain't got it. I win. If you could find evidence of that, my friends, you could change the world.
layout of the suite of viruses, viral uh, remnants, is exactly the same and could not happen unless it was inherited by a common ancestor. And so that's that's where we're at. So. Accordingly, retroviruses could have originated from within the host genome. Okay, you, you, you admit it, that the host would have predated the virus. Okay, that's exactly what the variation-inducing genetic element hypothesis put forth by creationists suggests. Okay, accordingly, retroviruses could have originated from within the host genome instead of invading it from outside. This had to have been the case in any scenario since viruses are dependent upon host cells. This means that the cell's genome had to predate the viruses. You can read all this yourself. So uh, I get, going back to the question I asked, is there a way to differentiate a virus mimic and a legitimate ERV? Right, so that's a good question. I would say the majority of what we're looking at in terms of these, um, you know, quote unquote, genomic fossils that uh, evolutionists such as, you, as yourself look to and compare across different uh, groups, different species, that uh, fall within a nested hierarchical pattern, as well as the uh, mu mutations that occur in, in these LTRs, these LTR uh, elements. I would say that the vast majority, if not all of those, are created units of, of DNA function. But do we have evidence that large-scale changes occur? Yeah, we have the fossil record, and it really is a record, and it's so much so that he can't even pretend to refute it, he just has to pretend it's not really evidence. For anybody in this room who calls yourself a Christian, if you think you have scientific evidence to indicate you're God, bring it! You ain't got it! I win! You're dead. How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? All we've ever seen in the history of humanity is variations happen with limits. Uh, but they, you really think an amoeba turned into a shark and a whale and everything? There's no evidence of a single cell creature ever producing even a two cell creature, let alone an elephant or a whale or a human. But they put them on, draw lines on paper. The evolution theory clearly teaches the earth began as a hot ball of rock. As it cooled down, it began to rain, and it rained on the rocks for millions of years and turned them into soup, and the soup came alive. Wade, simple question. Do you believe you are related to a snail? Just a yes or no. Yeah.
I, I, one more thing. Next time we have a debate, instead of a possum hat, Wade, I got the perfect hat for you to wear. Right here. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> With your SpongeBob imagination. <laughs> just, just imagine you're related to a possum. I don't have any tin foil, but I'm sure you've you've got some tin foil. You can make a hat. Oh, that's good. That's good. Everyone's stuff. in on it, right? <laughs>